Welcome to this DDI CADcast. My name is Quentin Rock, and today we'll cover the interference detection tool located inside of SOLIDWORKS assemblies. Now there's a lot of little caveats to this tool, so let's jump right into SOLIDWORKS and get started. Before I launch the interference detection tool, notice the assembly feature tree has some toolbox components included in this assembly. Now to get to the interference detection tool, you can go to the Evaluate tab of the Command Manager, and you'll notice it's one of the first icons on there. You can also go to the Tools pull-down menu, and you'll notice the interference detection is there. Or finally, you can always use the Search Commands at the top right here to find any command in SOLIDWORKS, including interference detection. Now let's go ahead and launch this tool up. The first thing it does is prompts me to calculate. Before I actually hit the Calculate button to run this Interference Detection tool, notice that what it put in these selected components. It put the entire top-level assembly in there. Now, it does that by default if nothing else is selected. So, for example, if I have something pre-selected and then I hit the Interference Detection, you'll notice it adds that component instead of the top-level assembly. So this can be very useful if there's just a couple components that you want to check your interference and not the entire subassembly. You can pre-select them, similar to many of the commands inside of SOLIDWORKS, where you can pre-select entities and they'll show up in the selected entities portion of the command. I'll go ahead and remove that and pick the entire assembly and then just hit Calculate. And you'll see that I get several results. I get 10 results in the specific assembly. Now, a couple of the other things with selections is you can actually choose to exclude components. So if there's a component you're not worried about or you expect to have interference with, you can choose to ignore that or exclude those components. So this first checkbox here, Hide Excluded Components from View, is whenever I put something in this excluded components, it'll automatically hide it. So for example, if I take this first part here, you'll notice that it's hidden now. If I uncheck that box, it's showing. Now, as soon as I choose to exclude it, it will not show those results. Whether I show it or hide it makes no difference. So when I calculate, you'll see I only have five interferences now. If I hide it, I still have those same five. It's just a graphics way of looking at it. The other checkbox here is to remember excluded components. So now remember this list so that when I come back in this command, it remembers that I've already picked those to exclude. So you don't have to keep continuing to run that every single time. Now, um, the one warning I'll put on this is if you do choose to remember excluded components, you have to hit the green check mark when you're done with this command, not the red X. That'll cancel out and it won't remember those excluded components the next time you go in. So make sure you choose, if you choose this option, you're hitting the green check when you're done with the command and not the red X to cancel the command. I'll go ahead and calculate this. Now before we get into evaluating some of these results, I just want to talk about some of the graphic settings here. The first thing to point out with graphics is in the results box here, as you click on some of these items, you'll notice that some of the parts become transparent. And those are the parts that are interfering, and that's controlled by an option down below here that says make interfering parts transparent. So that I like this option turned on. You can see the interfering body there. You can see the results as you click through it. Now it's not going to make every single part that interferes all these parts on this list transparent. It's only as you highlight them here or as they're selected in the results section here. On the reverse of that, there's a whole section at the bottom here called non-interfering components. So now it's asking you what do you want to do with the ones that are non-interfering. And you have a few more options for those. You can make those transparent as well. You can make them hidden. You can make them wireframe. Or you can choose the default option that I had, which was use current. And use current just maintains the assembly settings or the assembly graphic settings for those parts before you launch the interference detection tool. I like to make the interfering parts transparent and use current, but it's entirely up to you. Now back at the results section, let's take a look at some of these results and some more features here. 
What you'll notice is that each one of these interference also shows a volume value. And that's how much interference each is between the two components. Now, if you expand out any one of these components, you'll see, or any one of these interferences, you'll see the components that are tied to this particular interference, and you can see the volume there. There's another checkbox here down at the bottom that actually switches or just transposes the way this is done. So instead of showing the interferences and then a components below, if you check this component view checkbox, it shows the components and then the interferences below for that component. So it's entirely uh, up to you how you like to view it. Sometimes both are very helpful depending on what you're looking for in the interferences. I'll go ahead and uncheck that and just view it by interferences. And you'll notice that some of these interferences are strictly because of toolbox components. And this is a very typical thing. Um, because in our fasteners, whether you use the SOLIDWORKS toolbox, or you make them yourself, or you download them from somewhere, we just don't typically uh, model threads. Um, so you might be expecting a lot of interferences with your hardware or your fasteners because you're not modeling those threads. And even let's say you did go to the extremes and modeled all the threads and the threaded holes, lining those threads up so they don't interfere is next to impossible or just very tedious work. So because I know this is something I expected, I expected the threads to, to not match up, um, I can choose to ignore that particular interference. And when I choose to ignore it, you'll notice now that it goes from interference 4 straight to interference 6. Nowhere on this list does it show that. You also notice that it says two inter ignored interferences. So let's go ahead and click this option down here to show the ignored interferences. Now, the reason it shows two is because I actually had one already in there. And remember, if you want it to maintain or remember ignored stuff or remember excluded components, you always have to hit that green check and not that red cancel button in that command. So we can choose to show those ignored ones or take them off the list in general. If I want to bring them back, I can always right click and choose unignore. Also notice when I right click, I have a zoom to selection. So in a large assembly, I can actually zoom in to some of these sections or zoom the, the view in to some of these sections to see it a little bit easier. Now, instead of having to go through, find all the toolbox components, or possibly view it by component view, find them all, and ignore them, SOLIDWORKS knows that if items are created by the SOLIDWORKS toolbox, they're considered fasteners. So you can actually have it create a fasteners folder down here in the options command. And then it'll put all the fasteners underneath and all the items here, all the, all the interferences of other components or non, uh, parts that are not considered SOLIDWORKS toolbox components in, in the list. And they may be the ones that you're mostly looking for because you're not worried about the thread interferences. I'll uncheck that. You'll also notice there's an option here similar to the fasteners that says create matching cosmetic threads folder. And you'll notice now the results have a matching cosmetic thread. So these particular components, I probably use the hole wizard for a tapped hole, and I use the toolbox component that has cosmetic threads. And if they match, it'll put those in the same folder for you. So if you're importing parts or doing other things, you may not get these results it may not recognize them as uh, cosmetic threads or anything like that. So this is only useful when you're actually using toolbox components along with hole wizard or any kind of cosmetic threads that you've applied to a hole. I'll go ahead and uncheck that as well. While we're in the options section here, I just want to touch on some of the options we haven't talked about yet. And the first one on the list there is treat coincidence as interference. And what this option does Anything that's coincidence, it will now, when I run this study or when I hit the calculate button, it will now consider those interfering. So in, by default, you almost always want this turned off because obviously in your assemblies, you have a, quite a few coincidence parts or coincidence faces. So you're going to get a lot of results if you have this checked. I recommend that there are, when there, are, when there is a good reason to check this, you only do selected components up top for the ones that you want to check. Otherwise, your list here in the results is going to be quite large for um, coincidence interferences. 
The next option is to treat subassemblies as components. And all this does is right now, by default, it runs the entire tree with all the components in it, and it does not consider a subassembly at all. It just considers the parts inside the subassembly or subassemblies. If you check that box, it basically says consider that a part and treat it like a part in the tree rather than all the components of the subassembly. And what that means is it's just not going to check, by default at least, it's not going to check the internal um, interferences for that subassembly. It's only going to check the external interferences with that subassembly and other components in the tree. And that's very similar to include multi-body interferences. So now you can actually tell it that if you're treating it like a, a part or, a multi, or you have multi-body parts, to include those and check for interference in those parts as well. So that's probably a good one to have on in most cases, but keep in mind that it's going to check internally into those parts as well and not just the outside. So if you have, these are basically, you have to know your models a little bit and how you're, you're using them. But, you know, if you're using weldment parts or something, it might be good to know if you have multi-body part interferences in, in that particular one. And the final option here is ignore hidden bodies and components. And all this does is if you've already got some parts hidden before you launch this tool, you can choose to ignore them. Don't use them when I hit this calculate button up top. Ignore the ones that are hidden. Ignore the hidden bodies or components. So just keep that in mind. Um, those are a few more options in there. And that's basically the interference detection. But before I finish this CADcast, I want to talk about a couple things that you should be aware of as you use this tool. One of them is careful about creating a fasteners folder and just ignoring fastener interferences. Um, now, it's a very useful tool, but if you notice, and you may have noticed this as I scroll through here, let's see if I can find the one here. I think it's... Uh, one of these here. Yeah. You'll notice the interference 7 and 8. They actually have some interference between those fasteners. So if I scroll over here and kind of take a look, you notice what it is is just the way I've oriented these bolts. They, they don't clear it. Now this could be a problem. Um, luckily I caught this in time, but this can be a problem. So you may want to be careful about ignoring it or just realize that that might have gotten ignored had I not, um, had I checked create a fasteners folder and just ignored everything in that fasteners folder. So it's a good idea to, to you know, double check these results and keep an eye on those things. Another, I'm going to go ahead and click OK to this. Another one is in, in the, uh, when you have different configurations. So you see I have a closed and an open configuration for this particular valve. Just keep in mind, you're going to want to check multiple configurations. The interference detection tool only runs on what's active right there in the window in SOLIDWORKS. It doesn't check and go through all the configurations and run on those. So those are just a few things to the interference detection tool that you're going to want to remember or to keep an eye on that can sometimes still bite you even though you've checked for interference detection. Okay, that wraps up our Interference Detection CADcast. For more CADcast topics, check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ddicad or our tech blog at ddicad.com slash techcenter. Thanks for watching.